right. Well, we're here. We're live. So. All right. Well, we're here. Uh oh. We got that weird feedback loop going on. What's going on here? All right. Uh oh. One second. I'll be right back. Going on. What's going on? All right. Well, I'm here. So, uh, we might do our drawing again for that wired snowboard giveaway just because I'll see if he's back. But yeah, we might be doing that wired snowboard giveaway again, unless Trey McKay gets back to us this week. Otherwise, we'll be doing it at 4.45 our time. So yeah, if you stay tuned for that, you could end up winning again, and then you got a week to get back to us. So that is where we're at there. Um, otherwise, we are getting ready for the Black Friday giveaway as well. So you guys, if you're unaware with that, we're doing a shred foundation thing where we're going to end up giving away a bunch of gear that day. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to start with some entries this week and that'll go all the way up until our whole black Friday stream of fun from like 10 AM to 8 PM, something like that. I got multiple uncle Abrams in right now, so we'll see what happens there. Otherwise. Yeah. Okay. There he is. Hey, there yeah. he is. I think we're working. Yeah. That was a weird one. That was really weird. So I was filling them in on the wired giveaway. Yeah, because uh, no one claimed it. Yep. So Trey McKay again. Say something. Yeah, you got till four forty-five today. Yeah. If you don't, yeah. we pick a new winner. Yep. And then I was just talking about the Black Friday entries. If you want to elaborate on, and I just kind of brushed it. Yeah. So since November is Black, we did the Black Friday live streamathon after Thanksgiving. We do multiple live streams that day. We give away a lot of stuff. It's a way of giving back to the community and everything. So what we're going to do building up to that is we're going to do a bunch of different prize drawings for that day. So from now until then, until pretty much the second live stream of the day, you're going to be able to get entered. So this week, if we answer your question, you're getting an entry into it. If you super chat, get a spin, you can win 10 entries. You can get the cuckening and the person below you. You know, you can get one entry. There's stickers and stuff on there. So we are doing that. But as we get closer to Black Friday, we're going to slowly change the rules. We kind of figured this out last month with the Wired Snowboard giveaway. But we want to try to give you guys multiple chances to win some stuff with this. So we're going to go. We're going to do that. So today, any question we take, Super Chat regular, you're getting one entry automatically in it. But as we get closer to Black Friday and that morning of Black Friday, we're still going to be taking possible entries for a giveaway for the second live stream of the day. That's when bankruptcy comes back and you could lose all your entries. So there is a chance of that. Also, we've decided anyone super chats $100, you get 50 entries automatically. You could go bankrupt later on, but you could get 50 entries in there. So uh, that is always on the table if anyone wants that. But that's kind of what we got going on. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this week's top five. TC's second shortest top five. <laughs> it's a minute longer than his last one. Yep. So, uh, so yeah, we did that with the beginner bindings and stuff. But we got that going on for you guys. So we're just going to kind of file through, answer everyone's questions as we get going, go from there. And, uh, you know, that uh, also, if you want to embrace some 1990s, early 2000s chaos, there is a link in the description to our Discord. We were talking about the various crab rangoons and how that should be currency. That's just like an ongoing thing over there now, so you could always do that. Uh, also, in the description, I would highly recommend everyone checking out this week's cultural mystery link of the week. It's from our boy Curtis Jackson. It's a short. Uh, it's it's a short movie. Is really what it is about uh, snowboarders working in snowboard shops. So I'd really strongly recommend you check that out as well as there is a ton of video parts, trailers, edits, and full movies in there. So that'll keep you guys stoked. So yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, so we're going to, we're just going to slowly start into this. So don't feel like you got to do anything or if you do want to do anything, I don't know, but I, 
we do have to start off with the first super chat from our boy Jack off beat. Get cucked letters. Hashtag thank you for being a friend. And it's just perfect that he he didn't get let let letters get that first spin. So we'll give him that. And don't eat the yellow snow. And uh, of course, letters wants everyone to know that the second hole is the best hole. And remember to spray ski school. But then we've got this big super chat from our boy, Beziums. I've heard third is good, but 30 is the worst. Woke up today and my knees stopped working and I had to warm up to get out of bed. Hashtag getting old sucks. Hashtag RIP my knees. Hashtag dirty 30. Hashtag don't let David near your wives. Hashtag eat birthday crab rangoon. Somebody turned 30 and their body fell apart. <laughs> That's literally what I got from that. So... And uh, join Angry Snowboarder VIP. All right. So this is actually a serious question from JJ. Would the Rome Warden 154 wide be okay learning fundamentals on a 200 pounds, or do I really need the 157 wide? Hashtag my first snow vord. Vord. Not board. Vord. I love it. 5'10", size 12. Um, it's your first board, so going a little smaller is fine. You're just going to overpower it with your weight. I mean, a 57 would probably be better for you in the long run. But if you understand your learning curve is going to go up because that board's going to be soft and more flexible and far more forgiving, it's not a bad option. You agree with that, TC? Yep, 100%. Ooh, click the links. Click the links. And then we got uh, Ride of a Life with the Super Chat. Want to add a short volume shifted board that has a more surf feel and easy to maneuver in really tight trees. Do you have any experience with the Arbor single, something similar or recommended? I don't. I think maybe I did one lap on the single just fucking around because Tony Perez, our rep, designed that actually. Um, and he designed it so that he could go ride Snowbird from the tram to the bottom. And that's kind of where it came from. But, I mean, you you want something more surfy and loose, so you want something with, like, that setback camber. So the two boards that come to my mind are the Telos Backslash or the Nidecker Mosquito. What do you have, TC? Hmm. Is it a volume-shifted board, then? The single? Or... It's a medium-shifted. Okay. Because you can Cause otherwise... ride smaller. Okay. Otherwise, I was thinking, like, a Mind Expander. Or even, I would say, uh, hmm. yeah, go a mine expander and then probably a six stick where it's not Ooh. really volume shifted at all, but Ooh. it's going to get you top to bottom and super maneuverable in the trees. Actually, a six stick, I, I changed my, yeah, six stick is, yeah. then you don't have to go volume shifted on it, but that thing, that thing's surfy and fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. Pet the stash, pet the stash, but only with TC's consent. Yes. All right, so we got DZ. Uh, you can get last year's Salmon Dance Hall for like 300 right now. Great board and a great deal. That's just a PSA. That is just mm -hmm. a PSA. And uh, all right, we've got this super chat from Letters Feed TC, hashtag Benetech Bird Boys, hashtag Rangoon Roughnecks. We're, uh, we're, we're starting a whole military that is based on conquering micronations in the name of getting Rangoons. So it's like Rico's <laughs> Roughnecks from, <laughs> from the Paul Verhoeven classic Starship Troopers. Not the book, the movie. It's a classic. It's the Rico's Roughnecks. It's the Rangoon Roughnecks. <laughs> Ooh, TC mustache ride. All right. So we got this question from Jaden D. Question for TC. I'm 5'10, 185 pounds, 10.5 boot. I'm looking to pair my usual Crunch Wrap Supreme with a few regular bean burritos. Will fire sauce and a Baja Blast pair well with this order? Hashtag spray toilets. <laughs> yeah. See what you uh, did there. That was a good one. <laughs> I probably wouldn't go with a bean burrito, but yeah, Crunch Wrap. Go with the soft taco instead of the bean burritos. But yeah, 
Fire Sauce, Baja Blast, you'll be all right. Large Baja Blast, because they never give you as much as you think you get. It's okay. My mom used to have a Baja, and she wants another one. And if she gets a Baja and she comes to visit, you and I are driving the Baja to get Baja Blasts, and then we're mm -hmm. going Baja. My mom will probably be in the back seat while we blow donuts. She's all about that. <laughs> so, but yeah, all right. So give that man an entry. Yep. All right. And then uh, got another super chat from others. Can't forget about Slushy Shredder's wife. She needs a win. Spray Ski School. All right. So then we got this question from Tibby TT. Is there any real benefit to the additional exo strap on the Nidecker Kaons that connects the with connects the ankle and the toe strap? So what that actually does, if you adjust it right, is it releases the pressure off your hip while still locking you down. So if you have instep issues, it can alleviate that. It also changes the power dynamic just a little bit like when you're pushing into it, especially if you drive from the outside of your foot back into the inside you feel that difference have you ever ridden that binding tc mm -mm. Oh, we need to get you on that i saw they make like three different versions of it though they do they do okay well let's uh let's take this super chat from samuel kelly hey angry and tc appreciate all you do just added a medium board to my quiver what with size eight boots vans and fuse Will a skate tech binding help with getting pressure to the edges? 100%. percent mm hmm 100%. Like, you know, that skate tech, I mean, you you can go into it because you actually ride the Mercury as your everyday binding. Yeah. I mean, especially if you're like, like you said, like you got that smaller boot on a, a little bit of a wider board. Like it's definitely going to help where with, it just helps with that pivot system where you're not totally on the ends. Like people are like, kind of scared i think when they start snowboarding that their toes are hanging over the edge because they've had toe bite in their like in the past and that just is going to help where you can actually get to the edge of the board in a timely manner where it's not going to be such a delayed reaction or you're fighting to get to the edge of the board it's just going to help you out in the long run for sure when you have those tinier boots i would definitely say though go with something like medium stiffness and above if you get something a little too soft that ankle strap isn't going to be your friend when it comes to like really leveraging that board yeah all right and we got this comment from our boy tommy bennett saw you at keystone today didn't get a chance to say hi because you were flying to catch up with your brother i don't know how i was at keystone because i was putting tires on my car today <laughs> i would have been very i didn't leave, I, Brecken, I didn't leave, leave my block <laughs> yeah but i did almost get run over by an old lady it's like i don't know what the fuck she was doing this chick it's like i went out to put the tires in the car while I, before the uh because i had a mobile tire guy come and so like, i'm sitting out there and i look both ways to cross the street and this woman drives past pulls it in front of the church to park and i'm like okay cool I'm walking down the road. She, I don't know if she just thought she threw it in park or what, but next thing I know, she's doing probably about 50 in reverse. She stopped that short of hitting me as I jumped out of the way. And as I jumped out of the way, she stopped. Then she just slammed the gas again and just peeled all the way down to like in front of the laundromat. <laughs> then put it in drive and drove up on me and I'm screaming at her. I'm like, fucking pay attention what the fuck are you doing you're too old for this shit you probably shouldn't be driving so yeah i almost got killed by a honda crv today <laughs> that was not good all right we'll take this super chat from mb someone told me to buy spins hashtag discord made me do it discord makes people do a lot of things <laughs> oh well you won yourself a small sticker pack sir you know how to get a hold of me Email me info at angrysnowboarder.com and give me that mailing address and I'll get those in the mail to you. So, and as of yesterday, two days ago, yesterday, two days ago, two days ago, two days ago, everyone's prizes and stickers should be out right now. So we're doing good. We're doing good. So, okay. 
This is a good one from your guitar one. How does it feel to be back out on the snow? My Achilles tendons hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stoked. I have, I'm stoked. I have absolutely like a pig in mud. I'm so happy about it. I mean, we did get, we got two days so far. So, uh, yeah. So, all right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And then we've got uh, Brendan, the disgruntled historian spins, wins and directional twins. Three things that you could all get on this channel. Ooh, throat punch that too. And we'll take this super chat from Colorado Roughneck. Thanks for the content, boys. Well, honestly, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys tuning in and stuff. So you guys are the ones that really make this possible for us. So, well, I don't know. I, I can remember when I used to live stream to 10 people. <laughs> so, another throat punch. All right. Um, right. Let's see. We'll take this one from Jason Rogers. Averin. I know you ride the K2 Thraxis. I've tried it on it and liked the fit, but the J-bar is really pronounced. Does it break in? It'll break in slightly. You can heat mold it, but it is more pronounced with this new generation compared to the old generation, and it stays that way. Like That's part of the reason I'm feeling it on my Achilles tendon. I think I actually got to go into my liner and cut it and pull some of the foam out of the J-bar in there. So if you're hoping that it's going to aggressively break in, it's not. If you're okay with it mildly breaking it in, it will. All right. Ugh, ooh, loser. All right. We'll take this one for your guitar one. What's the oldest piece of gear that you regularly use? Probably the first year black labels right now. Actually, I take that back. I got some old ass goggles I'm still rolling with. Like I got some Oakley line miners and or flight decks or whatever the f I think they're line miners from the first year and my dragons are old. What do you have? My mittens. Oh yeah, your your mitts are kind of old. Yeah, those are going on six, five, six years old now. Yeah. yeah, they're old as shit. It's they finally have a hole in them though, so it might be time, but it's a tiny hole, so I might just let it run for the rest of the season. Oof. Yeah. All right. We'll take this one from S. Scott, nineteen eighty-six. Chaos reigns. Ultras or stratas on my new OG slush slasher. Super surfy ultras. Mildly surfy stratas. That's the way I'd go with that. Especially yeah. Especially it's the OG because it's that flat to rocker, the better version. So. <laughs> Pet the stash. Uh, Jonathan Basilius, Canadian alternative for CB days. I don't know. Rub some mud and honey on you and roll mm. around and let a polar bear lick you. I don't know what you people do in Canada. I mean, I deal with a French Canadian for CB days, so I don't understand why you can't get it up there. I don't, I don't know these things. <laughs> TC Mustache Ride. All right. And we got Mike T. Spin me. Hashtag RIP Trey. He's got till 445 to claim this board. Yeah. Pops into this live stream. We will let him. He can claim it. If he doesn't, we're, we're going to pull a different winner. He's still got the hat full. Throat punch. Uh, no, your boy Sam Duty, Yarg. I think he's just figuring out how to super chat. <laughs> Ooh, watch those reviews. All right. So we got Journey Boss. I know your options on Never Summer, but have you tried the harpoon? I've never rode a Never Summer, but heard, heard like animals. Good things about the harpoon. There's nothing good about any of this shit that they make. They're all fucking trash. You, they're. I did not realize that they are now selling their boards between seven and eight hundred dollars. I was like, what the yeah. fuck kind of premium markup is this for a board that doesn't even have structure? Like with a die cut that'll probably fall out. All right. All right. Let's see. We'll take I'll this put quite one. Quite a few on. people on that board. 
They didn't mind it. They thought it was fine. It's a rad dad board, if anything. That's what I that's what I think about it. <laughs> Isn't that the one that they just traced the flight attendant? Like the shape of the flight attendant, and we're like, yeah, that's what it is. Nah, the harpoon's slightly volume shifted, uh with more setback than the flight attendant. The flight attendant, I think, would be the I don't even know if they make it anymore, but I thought that would be like their uh the West the Shaper Twin or something oh. like that. I don't I know. don't know. All I know is I kept seeing proto, 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 proto. Everything was a proto of something. Yeah. Like, and then it was triple camber. And I was like, God damn, what's next? Quad camber? Like, just fucking make a full camber board at this point. All right. They make so one. Yeah. <laughs> so we got this super chat from Daffy Drink. Either of you ever been to Big Sky or Red Lodge, Montana? Wonder what you thought of these resorts as might be out that way for a job in December. Cheers. Uh, nah, I think the closest I ever came to Big Sky was I had to drive to Montana to pick up my German Shepherd when my parents drove him out west. Otherwise, um, I've never been up there to ride. Have you? Nope. Nope. I've had a lot of friends go to Big Sky and said it's rad, but you really got to be on top of your shit because there's a lot of dangerous terrain there. <laughs> Heard it's really rocky. Yeah. Like, very shark finny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... Throat punch. All right, let's see what we got here. All right. Okay, we're trying to find something. Ooh, we'll take this one from MJV14. Red Dead here with my rock board, Mega Merc, and Navigator. Do I really need anything else? Little to no park riding for me? You're good, man. Don't. Yeah. Save the money, buy more lift tickets. Go ride more. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, I think you're good. All right. And then we got this one from Jesse. Avery, do you run reference stance on the ride shadow ban, or what do you recommend for park riding? Personal preference, whatever you want. I ride a 21 and a half inch stance, which is like just kicked in from reference because reference on that board is 22. So. And we'll take this uh, one from Jack Off B. C6 or C8 for the 22 slash slasher hashtag Rangoon life. I mean, I'd probably go with the C6 and flip the strap. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you don't have to flip the strap on the C6. Oh, you're right. No, you're right. Yeah. C8 so, is yeah, the strap flip. But yeah. I mean, if you were going to go C8, yeah, flip the strap. But I don't, I think it's too much binding for that board. So no, I think I think you're good with that. Ugh. Oh, 10 entries. 10 entries. That nice. Was a good spin. All right. Okay, we'll take this one from David Tannenbaum. Thoughts on joy, on Joyride coming back, nostalgia play, or something to be excited about? Nostalgia play. Like, you don't even know what Joyride is, do you? That was before my time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Joyride, for me, I was there at the tail end of it when it became this weird price point brand, and that's what I know mm. it as. Uh, okay. Oh, I like this one from Monkey Paws. Should more surfboard shapers get involved with snowboard companies giving the dog that the Paisal turned out to be? Given given that the the dog that the yeah, if you didn't catch the Paisal review today, I just just fast forward to the part where it's about who is this board for? Because that's really the only good thing in that review. Um mm -hmm. anytime I hear someone be like, it was shaped by a surfer because, the, and I'm just sitting here like, oh, great. This thing's not going to be good at all. Like nine times out of 10. Like that board was just such a dog. I mean, oh. I feel like the Jones guys got it right. Like yeah. with Christensen, like that whole line is, is pretty good in my eyes. The twin, like the mine expander twin. Eh. But the rest of them, they're super solid boards, I think. 
So I don't know if like more probably don't need any more like surf shapers, but I think if there are more surf shapers, they definitely need to work with the companies more hand in hand and have people test the boards more as opposed to just giving Pizel just carte blanche and just be like, here, make us a board and we'll just, we'll make it. And it's like, I, that's literally what it was is they let, yeah. they just, they let them from start to finish. And the, someone posted it. I don't know if this quote is true, but I saw it in the comments and it was like the guy, the guy that shaped it said, he's like, I was just sick of riding these shapes from K2. They weren't fun. And I'm sitting here like, I would rather ride a beginner entry level K2 board than the Pizel. Like, that's where I'm at. I'm like, the K2 Pow shapes were way better than that thing. Like, you should be happy I didn't make you ride that thing. <laughs> All right. I'll take this super chat from Caspian K. You're probably sick of your power trip questions, but which two boards would you take? K2 Manifest Team, 160 wide. Black Snowbird of Death, 157 wide. K2 Excavator, 58. Tellus Caldera, 160. I'd take the Caldera and a 60 and the Manifest Team. Uh, the, that covers your bases right there. I would go Jay Manifest Cole. Team. i go Manifest Team and Excavator. Yeah. But I... Mean, I I know I would bring the man or like the team manifest and end up riding that the whole time, just because I really like the freestyle aspect of it in powder. Yeah, so. you, you say you you say that until there's eight feet of pow in front of you, and you're like, "No, I'm taking a pow board." I mean, if I'm on a one sixty wide, I don't think it matters. <laughs> if you're on a one sixty wide, you're floating at your weight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're gonna take this question from Braden Manini. Union Strata, Ultras, or my beat ass contacts for my Dinosaurs Will Die Wizard stick in the park. Uh, upgrade from your contacts to the new Ultras, and you'll thank me later. I think I think that's what you need, which supposedly we're supposed to be getting DWD boards to review, so mm -hmm. that would be nice. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right, let's see. Oh, okay. I, I want to take this question because I think you and I both have stuff for this. From Your Guitar One, I'm in the Midwest and I got the Epic Pass this year. Do you have any recommendations on how to make trips out west a bit cheaper? Man whoring. <laughs> Fuck anything. Just sleep in their house. Hobosexual it up. Uh, no, so if you're really trying to get out west and do it cheaper... Either convert your car so it's set up for car camping and figure out where you can car camp. Don't freeze to death, though. We don't want that. That's always good. But if you're serious about it, um, avoid hotels, Airbnbs, and shit. Try to find hostels. So, like, Breckenridge, Summit County, we've got two hostels. So, there's the Fireside Inn on French Street, and then there's the Bivy on the south end of town. And you can stay in the bunk room. I think it's, like, $25 a night or something. I mean, you're in a bunk room, but for 25 bucks, that's not that bad. When you're in there, don't eat at the resort. Cook all your own food. Um, you know, if a cougar hits on you, go home with them. Yeah. You know, for $2,000 a night, TC will rent you a spare bedroom. <laughs> yeah, we can maybe make that work. But you, have, uh, you, have, you have to spoon with you have to spoon with his dog, and he farts. He farts a lot. A lot. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I would say, I mean, if you are going to like stay at, try to stay at like a mountain, and you're an epic, I would say probably go Keystone over any of the other ones that's going to be on your pass, because that's last time I went out to Colorado before I lived here. That's what we did. And you can find some pretty decent places, especially if you book now. You got like four friends. You can find a decent condo, like ski in, ski out, or like walk up to it pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, that's what we did last time. But yeah, make sure you like, if you're going to drive, buy food in Denver or something like that. Like buy your groceries down there. Or and if you just smoke, your... make sure you don't buy your cigarettes in the mountains. Yeah, don't buy them in Summit County. We've It'll got like a 80% tax. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a fifty percent now. I so, think it's something absurd. It's some, and then they talked about raising it again. I just saw, so they're gonna raise it even more, even yeah. with their twenty-four million dollar surplus that they had last year from it. 
Yeah, but I put, I voted to put that surplus to child care because we right. need smarter children in this state. Otherwise, we're all fucked. That's very true. <laughs> that is very true. But yeah, I think those are kind of just like the general ways to stay cheaper. It's either you go all in with a bunch of people and you group rate like a Airbnb and get it for cheaper or a hotel room, or you stay mm -hmm. in like a hostel and you do that type of thing, you know. Um, those are kind of your two options. All right. We got this one from Endo Pop-Tart. Hey, Vren, I'm looking for a Swallowtail Carby Cruiser that can also charge mostly on groomers. Looking at the Crew of Dart, the Jones Storm Wolf, or the LibTech Retro Ripper. What would you choose, TC? Hmm. The Dart? Ooh. I would probably, I mean, if we're just cruising, I'm yeah, probably he wants going. To, he just wants to charge on groomers. I'm, I'm thinking Dart. Yeah, I was thinking the Dart or the Retro Ripper. Yeah. Just because that doesn't have any mag in it, full camber, like that could be a good charger for sure. But yeah, I would be either one of those. And the Retro Ripper has a sweet graphic too. It's always got a good one. Yeah. All right. All right. So we'll take this super chat from BZMs. Is there any overlap between Ride and K2 with the with them coming from the same factory, would you rather ride a K2 or a Capita based on overall construction? There's like very minor overlap with Ride and K2 because they do have different manufacturing processes. The sidewalls are different between the two of them. Where you see the most overlap is truthfully in the boots, mm -hmm. like material wise um, in there. But when you ride a ride board or a K2 board, you can feel the difference between the two of them. So, like, if you were to, say, ride a shadow band and a broadcast side by side, while they sit in the same category, they do ride different. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and what about you? What would you rather have some uh, – would you rather ride a K2 or a Capita based on overall construction? Um, That's a tough question, actually. I have two of them in front of me. I'm looking at a Capitan and I'm looking at a K2. And I'm like, I... Mm -hmm. Capita, I would probably say they're... A... Well, yeah. Depends. Are they making the team manifest? Because that was a great constructive board. But I'd probably go Capita. Eh, yeah, this is so tough for me. Go on K2. I'm going K2. Yep. If we're talking about base finish and like overall performance and speed, it's Capita. But if we're going with durability and like how I'm going to ride that thing for 150 days, I got to go with the K2. I just know I'll get more days out of it. Like, well, they, yeah, that's where... Capita, like <laughs> they make solid stuff. I know how bad I am with equipment. I will destroy their shit before I will destroy a K2. I just know it. Well, like, that's just that's how I'm I at, am. Where... That's why I have two Mercuries. One, I rode so much that the camber is actually gone on it. Now it's a flat Mercury. And it's like, yeah, I've, I've jammed my K2 into some trees and it still rides and just got a little chip in it. So I'm like, okay, like that one's, yeah. it's tough. But yeah, if I'm going to ride the board for just that season, I'll go Capita. If I'm going to keep it for multiple seasons, I'll go K2. But tough question. I mean, yeah, it it is. It's a it's a loaded question for sure. So, ooh, join angry snowboarder VIP. All right, we're gonna take this question from Jorge Morales. It seems Battalion is making Rome bindings. No, no, Rome is making Battalion's bindings. Let's get that right. But just doing it better right now. I'm not saying they're doing it better. They just have different things to differentiate them. Where do you think Rome goes from here to differentiate itself in that space? So the big differentiation between a Rome and a battalion when you put them side by side is the footbeds and the heel straps. That's the big differentiation between them. And then to an extent, Rome with the high back on the black label with that fused nylon or welded nylon or whatever the hell they call it. But I prefer, I prefer the footbed and the heel strap on the battalions. Mm -hmm. But I like the high backs on the Romes more. And that's yeah. kind of where it is, you know. Um, yeah, there's the overlap. But the one thing that I've noticed is, is like if you're in a Rome market, 
you're not generally not in a battalion market. And if you're in a battalion market, you're not usually in a Rome market. It's really weird like that. It's like they, they're getting broader appeal with very similar products, but they're not cannibalizing each other yet. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, let's see. We'll take this one from Cameron Holmrast. Curious, but why does Funky Snowbirds not have a presence in the North American market? Because they're too Italian for their own good. <laughs> when you're a European company like that, and if you don't understand how to actually get your product distributed into North America and do it right, you will never enter it. And I was having this conversation with a company from France, and I outlined to them exactly how they could have a foothold in North America. And they were like, well, we just want to be in a shop, and we know talking to you and doing the reviews – you could talk to your affiliates and then they would buy from us. And I was like, no, that's not how this works. And why are you trying to create more work for me? I literally just outlined how to pretty much put 80% profit into your hands without having to really deal with a bunch of bullshit. And instead you just want to go deal with a whole bunch of stupid bullshit and do it how things were. And I was like, and it hasn't worked for you in the past. And that's kind of where I see a lot of, a lot of companies doing that. All right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Ooh, let's find one. Okay. So this is a good one from DZ. Out of the K2 snowboard lineup, which one would you pick as your daily driver snowboard? So what would you choose, sir? I'd probably go Alchemist. Like that that well, they currently make. I would probably go Alchemist. I used that as a daily driver the first year it came out, and I like wouldn't get off that board. So I actually I believe I think they sent it to Isaiah to actually ride. They sent him three boards to ride. The assistant manager at Powder Tools and I took the Alchemist from him and it just got to the point where he's like, I'm not getting this back. He's like, You just have it. So yeah, I would probably daily drive that board, honestly. Like, that board is so much fun to me. And they got rid of the, the team hit, I want the hypnotist. That's fair. I want I want a lot of pop. I want to hurt my knees with all the camber <laughs> in it. I just, want to, I just want to abuse my body physically and mentally on that thing. That board is phenomenal. I need to tell Ben to finish that review so we can get that out. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Let's take this one from Chris Baum. Uh, hey, fellas, change the ankle strap on my Union Stratus to the XO 4.0 or throw down for some Rome Katanas. Hashtag Buckhouse sucks. Well, we all know he sucks. Mm. He literally tried to review a slush slasher from six years ago and then pass it off as if it was the new version. It's a completely different board. Oh, you fucking idiot. But um, it's down, you know, if you're like you're trying to save money, I don't think going to the XO 4.0 is a bad idea on the Stratas. I mean, I'm a little biased. I like Rome bindings. So I would definitely be like, yeah, yeah, go get them. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Are you – the XO 4.0 is a Rome strap? No, the XO 4.0 is a Union strap. Okay, that's what I thought. I was like, wait, yeah. what? <laughs> but he's, he wants to swap out his stock hit on the Stratas to the XO mm. 4.0 or throw down more money and get a Katana instead mm. so i mean if you're on a budget i would say just get the straps because that makes the most sense to me yeah yeah i mean i suppose if you're yeah if you're trying to save money but still i think those straps are like 75 bucks like just for the ankles i think yeah i think it's like 69.99 or 74.99 something like that yeah so i'm like it's almost half the price of a pair of like on sale katanas at that point so yeah but you got to remember he's in new zealand those prices are oh high. shit yeah just very get the strap high. that's just, why just i'm get the strap. probably <laughs> your best bet to just get the straps because that's going to yeah. save you some money and then if you're saving that money you can use that money to go ride more and that's kind of where i'm at with things so yeah i suppose if you're if you're paying that then yeah yeah all right let's give this man a spin Throat punch. 
Okay. I feel like this is a good question for you from D Rake the Shiznake, Sniznake. For hard as fuck charging and cliff drops, would you recommend the 164 wide Alchemist or the ride algorithm? I'm size 11 boots, 200 pounds, 2.5 legs. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I would probably go with the Alchemist, honestly. Yeah, me too. It's going to be a little bit more directional. It's going to have those pop forks in the tail, especially with that like carbon web. or It's not carbon, but it acts like carbon because it's a little bit more environmentally friendly. But that whole dark web that runs through the whole board, like that's definitely going to be what you want for charging and cliff drops. Where the algorithm will be fun, it's going to be a little bit more of that freestyle oriented where... Alchemist is going to pretty much just handle everything you throw at it. So it's a great. Yeah. Game. Yeah. I mean, I would go Alchemist for sure over the algorithm. Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to take this question from Dan Shima. I'm looking to move on from my ride agenda. What would you recommend? I'm in Switzerland riding steep and icy groomers, size 11.5 boots and 200 pounds. So coming off of an agenda, you know, it's an entry level, like beginner, beginner intermediate level board steep and icy you probably want something with edge hold maybe bump up to it like a jones mountain twin rosinal one something that's got a little added edge tech to it what do you have tc i was honestly thinking like a shadow band if you wanted to stick with ride um yeah. or maybe even like a a deep fake if you're really going steep steep and icy i would probably say a deep fake over that the deep fake will oh. grip better on ice than the shadow yeah. band because it's got um, that slim wall in it yeah, but then I was also thinking like a flagship because it does have that that tech in it as well. Flagship, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Even like a yes typo. Yep. You know, something like that would do it for you. All right. We got a super chat here from Luvie's Adventures, Spinorama. Oh, where are we going? Where are we going? Oh, back to throat punch. All right. Um... Let's see what do we got here. We'll take Jason Lawrence looking for a spin. And we are kind of just like skipping over things today because, you know, don't eat yellow snow. But for everyone that's just tuning in, this is November. Black Friday is coming up. This is when we do the stream, the streamathon for everyone's three live streams in a day. So right now, what we're doing up until through the first, actually up through the first live stream of Black Friday, you can get entered into a prize drawing later on. But on Black Friday, we're reintroducing bankruptcy to the wheel. And if you hit bankruptcy, you lose all entries that you get put in for the month. And today, you ask a question, Super Chat or regular, we answer it, you're getting entered. Super Chats do get a spin of the wheel. That's kind of what we got going on for you guys. Uh, we do have a ton of prizes to give away at the end of this month. Black Friday, we typically give away somewhere between two and eight snowboards. So, mm -hmm. Ooh, did you lose me for a minute? Yeah, for a second there, I I had to look up. I was like seeing how many entries we had, and I was like, uh oh, uh oh, yeah. Well, you know, little old ladies in Honda Civics probably running into the the box for the Wi-Fi or into the All internet right. for the town. All right, um, we got Art Arter Bedorsky, one fifty four wide board, uh, Rome Warden. Too much board for someone who's five ten, one hundred fifty pounds with a size eleven boot. Angry, you rule, buddy. I don't think it's too much for someone that size. I think, you know, it's just going to be if you're if you're hoping it's going to be like super parky, no, but otherwise I think I think you're super solid with that. So TC mustache ride. All right. And we got this question from Tom David. What are your thoughts on the Jones Tweaker versus the Arbor Westmark Camber? What do you think, TC? Um, I actually haven't ridden either of the. Uh, oh, really? No, I, I thought you rode the, the Tweaker. I have ridden the Tweaker. I haven't ridden the Westmark. I was just about to be like, nope, I have ridden the Tweaker. Or, I don't know. I like the way Jones boards ride, personally. 
Um, I know you didn't really like the tweaker that much, but I've also I've also owned like eight Westmark rockers. Yeah. So I don't know. I like the tweaker though, but you weren't you weren't a fan. So we're gonna have different opinions on this one. No, I would no, go tweaker. That's fine. Like <laughs> I would go tweaker on it. I know you're gonna go Westmark, but I just like the way it they depends ride. how soft you want to go. Because like flex wise. That Westmark camber is going to be stiffer than the tweaker. I know that for a fact. So if you're like looking for something that's going to be easier to press, that's the tweaker. If you're looking for more of an all-rounder, that's the camber, uh, the Westmark camber in there. They do grip different on edge because of the grip tech on them. And I will say this, that I think the tweaker actually grips easier and a little bit better than the Westmark camber, but the Westmark camber has more power. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Okay. Well, let's see. We're jumping around here. Oh, here we go. We'll take this one from T Bart. Any thoughts on slash snowboard, specifically the ATV? Also, recently got some Union Ultras for a Rome Ravine. Could they go on an aeronaut or alternator? I assume they're not stiff enough to drive them. Uh, well, evidently Longo rides an aeronaut with ultras. It's true. So, you know, what also, do I know? Longo's only like five, six. So yeah. And like 130 pounds. Yeah. So I don't, I would probably say they're going to be too soft, but I don't know. To answer the first question, I do like slash boards. They're definitely fun. ATV was, I had fun on the ATV. I really mm-hmm. did. That board was actually super solid when I rode it. It's a little stiffer than I thought, though. Kind of reminded me of an algorithm from Ride. Just a yeah, that's more. a good comparison. Because that board was definitely stiffer when I rode it, too. And then, what did I ride this year by him? Uh, straight and Brainstorm. The Brainstorm. I really, really liked the Brainstorm, actually. That was a fun board. But yeah, I mean... I think the ultras are going to be a little soft for a ravine. Nah, the ravine. Well, if you're going for like surfy slashy pow, totally on point. But on a groomer, might be a little underpowered. Yeah. And then, I don't know. I'm definitely going to say they're too soft for an aeronaut. But, uh, you know, it's Longo. He can do whatever he wants, really. So, you can ride like Longo. You can put whatever you want on your board and you'll be fine. Yeah. I mean... I personally, I wouldn't put an ultra on an aeronaut. I mean, it would fit better on the alternator. Alternator is actually softer than the aeronaut. The aeronaut, the minimum binding from Union I'd put on it would be the force, in my opinion. Like, that's just what I would do. But yeah, so, all right. Okay. We're going to take this super chat from our boy Ty King. Hi, TC Averett. I love that that's that he's using your photo. <laughs> it's so Bro, great. Like... Yeah. <laughs> I know last you mentioned stream. a few things about some good yoga videos that help to extend your riding. Please share some insight about your access to some. Help us old folks. So if you're on Instagram or YouTube, Mobility Duo, they have their Shred 3.0 program, but they also do Snoga, which is snowboard-based yoga. And I would definitely, definitely check them out on there. Uh, Even if you just get into some yoga, some basic yoga stretches, that will help you. The big thing is, is like, remember to stretch after riding as well. Like that will help you. Like when we went out on Monday, TC got to watch me die. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, other than the fact that for one day I couldn't lift my arms like above this because it hurt. It was fine, but I managed to go home and stretch it all out. <clears throat> so, you know, but yeah, that would, that would be it. I would start with mobility duo and kind of work from there. They're going to be the ones that are more in tune with that stuff. So, yeah. Oh, Hey, won yourself a small sticker pack, sir. Make sure you email me info at angry Give me that mailing address and we'll drop that in the mail. And of course, our resident degenerate letters. I need more stickers. Hashtag Tommy eats live birds. True story. Tommy Bennett eats whole live birds. Opens his mouth and just swallows them. 
And TC gives mustache rides. Ugh. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Ooh, let's see. Uh, okay. Oh, here we go. We'll take this one from web number 11. Did you guys get to jump on the new Solomon Sleepwalker? I know they've upgraded the base to center this year. I did. It was solid. Uh, we should have the review in the future. Because people keep asking us when certain reviews are going to drop. And I'm like, well, we obviously don't have a time machine and can't go into the past. So the future? So mm -hmm. it will drop in the future at some point. Uh, let's see. Take this one from Michael Cooley. Avran, thoughts on the Burton AK sw swash jackets? My 686 thermograph doesn't have a hood that is helmet compatible. Thanks. Ollie Fat Kids, spray the twin plankers. So if you are going to buy Burton, AK is pretty much where you want to go with their outerwear. It's the better quality stuff, in my opinion. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, I know that that hood is helmet compatible for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's give this man a spin. Oh, so close to getting 10 entries. So close. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Let's see, where are we going here? I'm just looking for something. Oh, this is a good question for you from Brian P. TC, do you leave your Mercury stock? My shop let me grab the Apollo footbed and I'm trying the Orion ankle strap. Might be perfect. Yeah, I just run them stock. I literally have them how they pretty just like adjusted the straps otherwise. How they came out of the box is how I ride them, really. Like, I never thought about changing the footbeds on it, but I kind of do want to change them to a canted footbed, just because I really do like a canted footbed, and they do make it on the Christensen edition, but that would be the only thing I'd really want to do to them, because I really like the ankle strap on them, so I really don't want to go to, like, a padded molded strap like they do have on the Orion, but that sounds like a sweet binding, actually. Let me know how that goes for you, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, I like the yeah. fact that you guys are out there DIYing stuff. Yeah. It's, good. it's good to see. After dealing with so many people for like the last decade, they're like, I really want this, but I, I don't. And, you know, I get these people that'll be like, I think I could put these on there. I was like, it's a fucking screw. Do you not know how to use a screwdriver? How, who the fuck put your bindings on? Just take it off, put a different strap on and go ride. I mean, come on. Back in the day, we used to make Drake 9s. They're part Drake, sure. part Tech Nine. They were Drake Nines. <laughs> they were very compatible. And at one point, I think my Drakes even had Burton straps on them because shit just kept falling apart. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I love it when people play around with that stuff. Ooh, yeah, spray ski school. Spray ski school. All right, let's uh, see what we got here. All right, you get to play this game from my knees or cheese. Looking good, boys. Mary Kill Bang, Donna Carpenter, Nick Gilson, Slim Whitman. It's all you. You. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. We're we're killing Gilson. Smart move. Probably gonna marry Slim and then Bang Carpenter. Slim yeah. would like that. Yeah, because I mean, because if I TJ made... to him. If I if I married yeah that's true <laughs> if I married Donna then she's just gonna ruin my snowboard company when I die so yeah I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna stick with what I got <laughs> what do you got there <laughs> oh Donna's gotta go <laughs> I'm gonna bang Nick Gilson and the whole time I'm just gonna whisper in his ear and be like. Are oh, you like this butter pad, bitch? <laughs> oh, yeah. Guess I'm marrying Slim. That's fair. 
he'll probably just gut me, rip my bones out, and turn me into a skin suit, and then do live streams as me. Oh, so, we're just know, gonna ride around. We'll yeah, if, ride if, around if, if you ever get a live stream and there's just someone that kind of looks like me, and you hear the song "Goodbye Horses," <laughs> just know Slim got me. I'm dead. Slim, Slim got me, and, and turned me into a skin suit. <laughs> Oh, well, you get nothing. Okay. Uh, we'll take this super chat from our boy Coffin. Booking a trip out west, East Coast rider on a freaker with C8. It's assuming I get a solid pow day. Are there places in the boat to rent a pow board for a day or two? Hell yeah, go to Powder Tools. You tell them TC and Averin sent you. Yeah, and you can even swap it out if you didn't like the one they gave or the one they have you ride. You can always just swap it for something. You, if yep. you want to ride multiple in a day, you can literally ride as many as you want in a day. Yeah, they're, take you a they're bit literally to right there in the base area. Yeah. But yeah, go up Although there. Although the gondola is further up. away now because they moved it. Just yeah. bullshit. So make well, sure that make sure yeah, that they rent bit. you the one wheel so you can ride it to the gondola. <laughs> Bernie and I were joking about that. I was like, you got oh, yeah? a one wheel I can borrow to get to the gondola? I was like, fuck, man. Dude, those fucking one wheels. All of them got recalled. for consumer. Did they really? Yeah. Consumer man. Safety Commission recalled every single one of them. For the batteries or what? Uh, something about like the pivot system not being balanced and people were breaking their wrists and falling off. Oh yeah, I saw. I've seen yeah. so many people with broken wrists and like uh, like clavicles and stuff from it. I'm like, Ooh. yeah. Oh yeah, no, I uh, I watched a guy run into a curb on Main Street Breck one night. Pretty sure he was drunk. It was like right at dusk, and he just threw that thing down like it was a skateboard, like running in front of him, and jumped on it, and he just took right off and hit the curb and just went right off, <laughs> and like right in front of Blue Stag, and I was like, oh my god. God, he's fucking That's dead. funny. And everyone's like, oh my God, is he okay? And I'm just sitting there like, just like that'll yeah, serve are, you. Those are dangerous. Yeah, I'm, I'm a horrible person. Hashtag bird banter. Uh, all right. Uh, we'll take this one from WLP. Do you ride rocker dominant boards longer or shorter than camber dominant for a beginner intermediate that enjoys groomers and greens? No, I ride them whatever size they fucking give me at this point. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, you just yeah, ride, ride them regular size. Unless it's volume shifted and it's got some weird shit going on, you just ride it. And you're a beginner intermediate. You can ride it a little smaller to get away with it to expedite your learning curve. So, yeah. yeah. All right, we got shred with three D's and a T. Shred, shred, shred. My twin pig 151 suits my riding style perfectly. Love it. Would it be a good idea to size up to a 55 for a twin pow deck for deeper days? I want to spin and ride switch on. I mean, you could. There's so many better boards out there. I mean, I used mine. I had the 54. Yeah, it was the 54. And I turned that into my powder deck because I just bought it too big. And it was totally fine. Like, it was a really fun powder deck. Like, you could go 56. I would probably say, if, like, go with, like, a spring break resort or the spring break powder, powder twin. twin. Powder yeah. twin is what I would go with over that. Even but, an Italian magic carpet. Or, not. it's not the magic carpet. It's the party wave twin. Uh, you could you could even do a mind expander twin from Jones mm -hmm. or the Yes Twenty Twenty, like you know, or yeah. even a K Two Party Platter. So, all right, we got I K over here. Are Rome highbacks and Battalion highbacks interchangeable? Surprised that the Battalion one has very little padding. Should be. I mean, it's it's mounting on the same system, so shouldn't yeah. be an issue. But they're also softer high backs too. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. All right. And we're gonna go back to your boy Ty King. Is there a place in Colorado where I can pull my twenty foot camper and shred with the kids? So. You can camp in National Forest Service. Uh, for up to two weeks, you just got to find a spot that's level. 
because I see people with travel trailers all the time on the side of the road by a base and going up mm -hmm. to the highway there. Otherwise, if you're coming to Brack, you can park it at Tiger Run RV and you get all the hookups or you can put it out on the airport an airport road in the airport lot. There's actually a camper parking lot out there. I see people all the time. And that camper parking, I think, is like 5 or $10 a day. I don't know. It's it's something absurdly cheap. So you can do that uh, if you're coming that way. Some of the smaller resorts will probably actually just let you park in the parking lot as long as you're not right up front. Like I know Ski Cooper, they've said that you could do it, but you've got to be further back from the uh, – um, you got to be further back from the front. So, yeah. All right. Let's see. Give this man a spin. Oh, hashtag bird banter. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Here we go. From our boy BZM. Sorry for the loaded question. Time to hook up wife. That's his, that's his wife's name. Just wife, trademark, mm -hmm. trademark. And I'm split between the K2 cold shoulder and the Capita equalizer. And she's been on a ride the last two seasons. Honestly, can't go wrong with either of them. Uh, the cold shoulder will be more damp though. And you are up in that Northwest heavy, crusty snow. I know that. So that may be the route to go with that. That's just going to absorb chatter a little bit easier. I would, I would say cold shoulder. Yeah. Like, Every that's where Carl rides. Like she loves that board, or she loved that board until she got her hovercraft. But yeah, like yeah, cold shoulder. Just pull the trigger. Yep. All right. So give this man a spin. Yep. Eventually, I want to just get a motorized wheel where I hit a button and it just spins because <laughs> I'm lazy. Oh, the cockening. Next person gets entered. Well. That goes to Brian Horsley. So, boom. Give him two entries. You got cucked. You got cucked. All right. Betty White says old people are still lit. RIP my shoulder. RIP Betty White. She didn't make it to 100. Last night, the Discord went off, and all we were doing was posting Golden Girl memes. It's fucking great. <laughs> for about a solid 20 minutes, just different Golden Girl memes for no apparent reason. Ooh, Avron cosplay. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see what we got here. Uh, we got Shi Hao Yi. Uh, just saw your review on the Pi Zell SBBS. If that if that's the board of feeling everything, what's what's your pick on the complete opposite side? I'd like to learn the choice of dampest board that you'd recommend. <laughs> you probably want to go to like a Mervin then. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, like a, if you want something in the same vein as the Pizel, I would probably go with like a LibTech rig. That would probably give you more of what you're looking for there. Right. Yeah. Oh, this is a good one for me from Tibby TT. Where's crazy Jeff been spotted passed out this week? Jeff has not passed out. So for anyone that doesn't know, Jeff is our resident homeless person. He's not unhoused. He's straight up fucking homeless. And I love Jeff. He's my favorite homeless person in the world. Because Jeff in the morning, first thing, he's probably still drunk from the night before, but Jeff at about 8.30 in the morning means he's fired down a couple shots and he started to be a little more functioning alcoholic. And my dog absolutely loves Jeff. She will follow him around and run around and play with him. And Jeff used to design airplanes for Boeing and shit for NASA and stuff. And now he lives in a tent under a bush. But Jeff has not passed out in the last week because it's been cold and snowy. So my guess is that he's either sleeping in the stairwell under the road by Thunder Mountain Lodge or uh, he's got his winter tent all set up somewhere in the woods and the moose might have raped him. Moose rape is a real thing. Uh, okay. Let's see what we got here. Ooh. 
Ooh, here's a good one from Jack Offbeat. How many days on snow are you boys trying to notch this season? I don't know. I'd like, I feel that I break even at about 122. I feel like that's when I got my money's worth out of my passes and everything. But it, all, it really comes down to how much product we get too. Like now that I have TC working with me, I was like, well, I guess I don't have to ride 130 days riding a new product every day because, you know, we've done the math. And I was like, if we each took 50 products to get to 100, that's only 25 days of riding if we did two things a day. Yeah. 50 days of riding if we did one. So, like, really comes down to that. Um, yeah, I was thinking around 100. Even if we're not, like, testing stuff out, still – my number is normally around 100 days I like to get on the season if yeah. it's a good. And that's if it's a, like a shitty snow season. If it's a good snow season, it's definitely more than that then. But, yeah. All right. Got this super chat from DWD Boards. If I win a board, I'm giving it to a random dude with a shitty. I love that. That's what I'm all about. Like, so last year I gave away a lot of boards at Copper. I just leave them out. And a lot of lifties ended up with them that needed them. And I think that's awesome. If you were to win a board and you would do that, I, I think it's all about paying it forward. You know, you're not paying it back. You're just paying it forward. Help the next generation. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Good karma came your way. That's 10 entries, bud. All right. And then we got numb. Spinning for Rangoons. I had Rangoons yesterday. Remember to spray ski school. All right. We got this question from Rockefeller. Is it fine for a woman to ride a men's snowboard like a yes basic? And if her feet are big, can she wear men's boots too? Size US 10. So, yeah. I mean, it's not like yeah. the equipment knows whether she's got indoor or outdoor plumbing. You know, um, mm -hmm. the big thing with the boots, though, you've got to see where her calf muscle is. If it sits too low, it's going to sit weird in that boot and it's going to crush that calf muscle. So you want to be aware of that, um, just how it connects in there. But as far as the board goes, I don't see any problem with that. No, I mean, if you feel weird about it, just get one of the boards they call unisex, which is half the snowboards out there now. So like you'll be fine. Like the board right behind, oh, this one, one right behind me, unisex model. They make it men's sizes all the way down to women's sizes. I rode the chairlift the yesterday thing. before you got up there with a girl on that exact zero. Yeah. So. yeah. So yeah, go for it. Who cares? As long as, as long as you're big enough to ride it, go for it. Like, yeah, if you're size 10 men's, you're definitely going to want to be on a men's board where you're not yeah. just towing out on everything. Yeah, like, exactly. It's just going to help her in the long run too. All right. And this is just funny from average Rome enthusiast. No question. Just take my money. Thank you. <laughs> so, oh, got a loser on that one. All right. So we got this question from Dylan Case. Hey, man, appreciate you recommending the K2 ray gun two years ago. Looking to upgrade to ride 40 to 50 days a year. Respect. That's awesome. You went from a beginner board to like riding 40 to 50 days. Any recommendations for a new board and binding? I'm 250 pounds at six foot and a pretty mellow rider. Yeah, man. I think it's time to upgrade to like directional twin, you know, like a little more rad dad. I'd say, you know, maybe ride shadow band, uh, Jones mountain twin, maybe even a flagship go a little more directional. Um, what do you have TC? Um, I mean, I would say, honestly, you could look at a yes standard as well, because if you're 250, six foot, you might have a bigger foot. That might yeah. be a, a nice, like, medium width board for you. Um, or it's not going to be too crazy. If you went for the unink, that might be a little too aggressive for you. I'd say just go with the regular on that one. Otherwise, uh, let's see here. What else would be sweet for you? I mean, Assassin would be a great board. It'll yeah. last you those 40 to 50 days. Like, that would be a great option for you. Did you say a Capita Mercury? No, I didn't throw that out. Yeah. No, no I would say a Capita Mercury in, like, a 65 wide, I believe, or something like that. I don't yeah. know. But depending you're on your six foot. Yeah, you're not 61 wide-ish, because you're 6'2", 250, I'd say about. Yeah. yeah. 
And then for bindings, I think you just want your, your solid workhorse. I'd look at like a Rome DOD ride C8. Mm -hmm. DC's probably going to say Jones Mercury. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Am I right? Yep. Yeah, right. Yep. Yeah. Uniforce. I'll just say Uniforce. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. For sure. Uh, yeah. Those are, those are good options for you. Yeah. Um, okay. Ooh, this is a question from DZ for you. Are we getting top five free ride and freestyle two board quiver videos this year? You're getting uh, top five two board quiver from TC video. Mm -hmm. so we collaborated like, on it though. But three, yeah. out, three hours to film that thing. Yeah, it's confusing as hell, dude. <laughs> you were all over the place. But that's yeah. that is coming. Oh, we owe Dylan a spin too. So I gotta get yep. Dylan a spin. Sorry, getting ahead of myself here. Oh, ouch, loser. Mm. All right. Um let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. We'll take this one from Ayadal. Would you recommend the Burton Cartel X or the K2 program for all mountain free ride with a freestyle flare riding a crew auto? Probably go with the program over the Cartel X because they revamped the Cartel X. It's essentially the old Cartel now. Exactly. They like yeah. made it softer. So, and I saw the programs at uh, Dylan's Christie's yesterday. They look good. They oh look yeah, real good. Like yeah, I would definitely. We go should with the uh, we should have a set of those next week to test, right? Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. I'm hoping I haven't heard back from Ben on what's going on with that yet, but I can hit him up again. Yeah, and just, just follow double up check to I mean, make if sure. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, we'll just get them next. We'll do them for 2025. So, well, we might be able to get them from uh, from Christie's as well. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, Creston might be able to float us some. So yeah, yeah. So yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Cool. Oh, bonus entry. So I got one. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. Let's uh, bump up, take this one from BZMs. Can't wait to get on the new era not to finally confirm that I'm not a sleeper Arthur Longo. You are too big to <laughs> be a sleeper Arthur Longo, dude. You eat Arthur Longo. You're like four Arthur Longos in one. I've met you. You're huge. Uh, hashtag bury me on the moon. Hashtag find Squatchmo. Hashtag hot boulder coming through. Oh, <laughs> oh. You're a lava rock just, just, just firing at Vesuvius. <laughs> Pompeii. You're just like coming out of Vesuvius and hitting Pompeii, dude. You're the end of days, man. Through. That's awesome. <laughs> oh. Watch out for that Averin cosplay. Okay. Uh, we'll take this one from Eric Chen. Golf season over time for the snowboard. Want to buy a new board? Have the K2 Passport, Nitro Squash, and the Battalion Thunder for Rock. 510, 240 now. Thanks. Um, why, Jesus. Let's see. Wait. What do you think? Need something big and directional, I guess. I'm I'm going either an ultra flagship or free carver nine thousand. I'd go free carver nine thousand over the ultra flagship. Then it breaks up that overlap of the passport. Uh, otherwise, yeah. I would say maybe you want to go with like a Karua pencil. Yep, something like that. I think that that would be it. Or maybe a ride peace seeker. Get, get oh, that would be on. really fun. That'd yeah, be really fun. Get, get yourself a turning, a real turning board there. Just something that's going to turn well and just fun for like yeah. charging and. Yeah. Oh, and he gets a bonus entry. He's got Love that one entry, so he's up to two. All right. Okay. We're going to take this one from Gnarly Charlie. Not to be confused with <laughs> Gnarly Charlie's, the pizza place under powder tools. They're what closed. factories brands have the most lively, energetic feeling boards? Capita, Ride, K2. Okay. Yeah. I mean, what, why? You got something you want to add to that? I would say 
I'm I would say Jones on that for sure, actually. Really? And I don't know. I think so. Well, like the aviator, yeah, but if you get on a flagship, it's just average. Ultra flagship yeah. is more responsive. But like that one is lively. <laughs> like that that thing's mismarketed. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. But like that, an aviator. Just like, yeah, this is like an everyman board that you can do everything, and you're like, what the fuck kind of everyman? Like, what is he like? Three hundred pounds? Is his name Kevin Bees? Yeah, you know, like. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I feel I feel personally that ride boards are pretty damp. Like, I wouldn't say they're the most lively boards out there, and it like. But we also have a forty pound difference between us. Yeah. About so that, like it depends for sure like because that's why that's why curtis like fucking sasquatch is that he is like that's why he loves them and that's why he rides rides so much is because it feels lively to him when yeah he's he's 240 well the big thing that i look at is like the carbon layup in there so if you like mm -hmm. look at like megadeth super d or super doa mega merc and you look at that, those are really mm -hmm. reactive boards. They're lively. They have a great response. And then when you look at like an algorithm and that carbon array that they put in there, it's an, mm -hmm. like an antidote from K2, stuff like that. You see it like those yeah. are the first, the second you say that, those are the first three brands that pop in my mind. Yeah. Like, and then. No, know, I can see that for sure. It's that. just the, like the urethane. Sometimes you get one of those and you're like, there's a lot of urethane in this one. Like, yeah that too but that's that's why i'm like ride doesn't feel the most lively to me out of it but yeah like capita and k2 100 percent on that yeah okay oh uh, let's see what we got here we'll take this one from sacage hey guys what's your opinion of the arbor element camber love the looks no park just groomer's slope other ones i'm looking at are the k2 ray gun pop jones frontier and the rome ward it's right in the same category with all of those. Um, you know, I would say out of those other three boards, it's probably the closest to the warden, honestly, mm -hmm. in there. But you like the visuals of it. Those are the other boards you're looking at. It's in the same category. I say just pull the trigger. Go for yeah. it. I mean, it's it's a super sustainably made board as well. Like that one's made out of koa wood all that cool shit that Arbor does has got it all in there. So it's a sweet board. Yeah. Go for it for sure. If that's Doesn't one that's caught Koa? your eye. I thought it was Ash on that one. I think it's got Koa in it. The elements, their price point when it's under the West Mark. That's why I think it's the Ash veneer. Oh, well, maybe. I know they came in two different colors last year at Evo. So. Yeah. I mean, so basically, be basically it's a downgraded West Mark. That's really yeah. what it rides like. It's or a downgraded Coda what it is it's like more of that high level beginner to saw low level to solid intermediate you know that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of where it's at uh all right well we'll give uh rough here for the angry skin suit a spin oh oh yeah there you go dude one yourself small sticker pack make sure you email me uh, info at angry and uh, with your address and I'll get that in the mail. All right. And we'll take this one from endo pop tart top three bodings for the crew of dart hashtag ice coast hashtag spin me right round hashtag holiday Valley. Dude, holiday Valley. I'm going to be there in December around Christmas. I was actually looking up. They're projecting that their opening will be November 24th. Hopefully. Hopefully they got the new six pack done, but uh, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try to be back in New York. I'm going to try to ride two days while I'm there, maybe three. So I'll get a day or two at holiday Valley and one day at Hollymont. But um, for top three bindings for, for the dart, I'm thinking, so now drive, get that skate tech with the power in there. I think that's solid. Union Atlas Pro. I, th I think you want the Pro over the regular Atlas on that one. And then I'm thinking a Ride C9 as well. Just give you guys some power. What do you? What are your three choices? Um, yeah, I would go definitely something with Skate Tech, like a, a Mercury by Jones, or I mean, the drive would be just fine. Probably the standard drive. Uh, yeah, I don't think you other, need a drive Pro. 
Yeah. Otherwise, a would you say a, a battalion atom full wrap? Or is that yeah. too stiff? Well, you could because you threw me off when you said Atlas Pro. I was like, oh shit! Like, but you, well, you could also go with the Astro full wrap. Yeah, because I think the and strap. I, I think the high back is a little better on the Astro than the Atom. Okay. The Atom's like weird like that, but okay. I mean, it's personal preference at that point. Then, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would go something with that mid stiff instead of like super stiff. But yeah, like Astro full wrap, and then. I mean, like a, depending on how really stiff you want to go, like a Solomon Highlander, Quantum. I don't. Depends how hard you really want to carve. If you want the Quantum, get that carbon high back. But between one of those two as well, like Highlander would be enough. The Quantum might be that extra step you're looking for, though. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, let's uh, let's give this man a spin. Ooh, the cuckening. Next person gets entered. So person underneath is WLP, so give them an entry. They cucked him. Yep. That's two for WLP. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got here. All right. We're going to go with our boy Pat Zoransky up at Ski Cooper. I can't compete with letters, but I'll take a... Pick your spin if you have one. Hashtag bird banner, hashtag Rangoon Ruffians, hashtag RIPL Stackers Adventures. Rest in peace. Give it a spin. See where we go from there. Oh, hashtag bird banter. Uh, okay, let's see. Ooh, I like this question from Tyler Richter. Favorite high-end park board to Ollie Fat Kids and rip a groomer between laps. K2 Hypnotist, hashtag Spray Skiers. That was like right there. Hypnotist for sure. I mean, you're talking high-end, maybe a Capita uh, Outsiders, although I do like the indoor or the spring break resort twin more than the Outsiders in there. Um, if you're talking ride, maybe a bench warmer. What do you have, TC? I'm going, yes, standard on ink. Ooh. Or not standard, sorry. Yes, yes, basic on ink. Ooh, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, I was thinking a bench warmer because I don't think the zero is going to be enough. No. Like, it's got pop, but it's not like carbon five pop in it. Yeah. So I would say that. Um, And then, what else? I mean, yeah, like a Huck Knife Pro, probably. So, yeah. Yeah, Huck, ooh, the new Huck Knife Pro is pretty solid too. It's got yeah. really good snap in there. There's a lot, like they revamped a lot of park boards this year. There's a lot more like higher end ones that are really solid. You can't discredit if you can find it a Nitro T3 or a Beast because those things, those things have the T3 is fucking burly. Oof, ouch, loser. So close. Okay, so close. Uh, okay. Jason Evangelista. Guys, what is, was your favorite park trick you regularly do? What's the most technical trick either of you have landed? My favorite trick is a toe side turn. <laughs> Still learning heel sides though. Uh, yeah. I love a good back one. That's like my favorite. Yeah. A Japan That's like my back one. I like that. I mean, realistically though, it's probably a nose press. I just like That's doing fair. nose presses. They're fun. Um, the most technical trick I've ever done. Uh, well, I got a double cork around once. I did the <laughs> same nine that JP Walker did, the dub nine. And I got it around and just basically cratered on the landing. Just <clears throat> So there was that. I've landed maybe three 900s in my life. Um. One that really sticks out though is like I did a 900 across like a four foot butter box at a basin, just just spinning so hard. And there's a giant vagina rut in the landing, and that's what actually stopped me. Like I just hit it and was like, Pink. so that's that's probably it. What about you? What's your most technical? Uh, 
most technicals we had a backyard set up when i lived here like on the power lines at keystone okay uh and we had a little like a almost like a cat track jump or just flattened out and used that as a jump and then we had a down log like as like a down rail pretty much and i did a 450 onto that i ate shit like for two hours trying to do it and then finally landed it once and i was like all right cool i'm good on that but that was probably the most technical trick i've ever done and it was it started off on accident and then it was like well, we're just gonna do this like until i get it otherwise i don't really do that much technical stuff in the park also really do like a front lip on on like a uh like a rainbow rainbow tube or something like that. That's super fun. Or rainbow rail. I do like that. Ah. Let's see. Well, I don't know. It's like you start doing a bunch of technical things, and then next thing you know, you're injured, and you're like, fuck yeah. my life. Yeah. Okay. We'll take this one from Luke Postel. Uh, my local shop told me that yes, Dicey is a solid park board. If I just want to be lazy, is that accurate? Fair assessment. It's yeah, actually, that's really good. Park. That's the best way to sell it. <laughs> you want a park board and you want to be lazy? Here you go. And it even has a little camber in it, so you can get some pop too. So it's a fun board, though, for sure. But yeah, that's actually a great way of saying it. It's hilarious. Yeah, and uh, remember to click the links, people. So yeah, don't forget check out the video links that we've got down below. There's a ton of videos that came out been a big year for video projects i'm loving it yeah I've been able to watch a lot of stuff i gotta watch the new dust box tonight i gotta watch the factotum movie and whatnot but yeah it's been a really really good year for movies and stuff and don't forget to check the cultural mystery link of the week and stuff so yeah and uh you're getting called out by max andy angry discord is my new favorite channel love how active Averin is with the community on there if only TC were more active too. He's lurking heavy. He's there. I lurk so hard. I was on there today. Yeah, um, you said I actually commented thing. today. Oh, yeah, you know. <laughs> I just got to know. And then I'm like, okay, good. I ask my question, I get my answer. Or vice versa, I'll answer a question and then that's it. But I'm always watching. It's like the, the slug lady from Monsters, Inc. Always watching. We You're watch there. You're just lurking. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. All right, uh, we'll take this one from Douglas Steppen. Steep ste Stepping. Our room contain is too much binding for a new headspace on the ice in the northeast. No, that's a perfect binding for that board. You're solid with that. Yeah. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, let's see. Find another one. See. And we got Joe Dirt, BC. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> Before Dear Cletus. Tight. Yo, dudes, I'm 120 pounds in size 8.5 boots. I ride bank slaloms, SBX, and cliff drops. Looking at the 154 transition finder, 153 auto, or should I be looking at an amplid? Honestly, transition finder, auto... I mean, you're doing cliff drops, bank slums, and SBX. I would honestly say you might be better off with a pencil in there, but or hear me out. The ride burnout. <laughs> like so this thing is way stiffer than people think, and it does have that border cross tip to it. Like this thing, oh my God, it's so stiff. This thing is just a goddamn plank, but um, the auto would be better for the SBX. The transition finder will be better in power. If you went with Amplid, you might want to go like Pentaquark, Soli Grail, one of those types of boards. Uh, all right. So, I would just uh, say the obvious. Just go with the free carver. Oh yeah! Fuck just yeah. go with the free carver, just 9, go with the free carver. Yeah, it's literally inspired by Jeremy Jones's old snowboard crossboard, like, and it's a factory one, so you're not gonna get kicked out of your bank solemns, and you're not gonna be a kook for trying to bring a custom Donick or something to a bank solemn. 
it's a factory board. So just go with those. It's stiff enough where it's going to handle a cliff drop too. So you'll be fine yeah. there. And it's full camber. Like what, yeah. what else do you want? All right. And uh, we'll take this super chat from Kenton Harmon. Assuming a 50 to 60 day season, at which point does a quiver get too big? 5, 10, 20? The answer to that question is N plus 1. N being the number that you currently have plus one more. That's fair. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Believe me, if I had my way, I'd only own three snowboards. I'd be the happiest man on earth. But I was having this conversation with some lovely ladies at the bar last night. And they were like, you have how many boards in your house? And I was like, I don't know, like 60, 70? And they were like, I got to see a photo of this. And I gave them, I showed them a photo. And they were like, what are, what's in those boxes? And I was like, oh, there's more boards in those boxes. And they were like, what? Where do you store this? And I was like, I have two bathrooms. One of them, the shower, is literally just full of snowboards. Just <laughs> completely across. But yeah, um, only you can decide if it's too many boards. Yeah. Oh, give this man an extra entry, TC. Oh, okay. And uh, let's see. We're going to take a... Let's see, where is it? I'm going to take a small commercial break right here for you guys because this is a sponsored episode. So, you know, this is, this is how we do things here. And, uh, you know, got to pay them bills, right? Okay, guys. Time for a product endorsement that we're actually paid for, which is a rarity around here because no one else wants to pay us for anything, contrary to popular belief. But we have no problem taking the money from CV Days. Why? Because we believe in their product. It helps us. I have a lot of ailments. I have arthritis. I have missing cartilage in my body. I probably shouldn't even be able to walk, let alone talk to you, between the brain damage and the body damage. But here I am, promoting a product that I fully believe in. And that is the OG Muscle Gel. CB Days has been awesome. I have been using this for two plus years. This is what helps me get through a really long season. And I ride typically 130 to 160 days a year. This changes everything. But you know what? I'm not the only one that's endorsing it. We got professional athletes. We got influencers, which those people really don't matter. And my mom. My mom fully endorses this. Are you at the shopping cart page? On CB Day's website, you get ready to check out. Why don't you use code ANGRY20? Save yourself 20% on this and get yourself a really good deal. You know you want to. Trust me. Just trust me. Yeah, there you go. So shout out to CB Day's. If you use the code ANGRY20 at checkout, you're going to save 20% on that. So we got that going on. Stoked to have those guys as a partner. Um, let's take some more questions here. We got about seven minutes till we pick a new winner for last for last month's board giveaway with wired snowboards all right uh we'll take this question from tyler leave it hey guys what bindings would you recommend to use to switch between a k2 antidote and an excavator uh i would probably go with like the k2 edition or even a bond if you wanted to go that route otherwise um Rome Katana is a good one. Just drop that review this week. You can check that out. Or even a Battalion Astro ASIM. Uh, what do you have, sir? Uh, obviously, Jones Mercury. Like That would be sweet on there. You said the K2s. Um, otherwise, I mean, like, what else that's not going to be sweet? Solomon Highlander would be pretty sweet on both of those. It would be enough for the antidote, but not too much for the excavator. So that would be a good binding there. Otherwise, did you say C8? I did not, but I mean, it okay. definitely is always a contender. I would definitely say C8 because then you can flip the strap on the excavator and have it a little bit more surfy for the trees. Would be a good idea. Okay. We'll take this super chat from Johnny Scott. Bought a nitro alternator. Do I go full beast mode and put my Union Felcors on it or go more surfy and put my Union Strat on it? Your call. I mean, realistically, either binding will work with it. I don't even think the Felcors are that beastly of a binding, in all honesty. No, they have the same chassis as the Strata, almost. A little bit yeah. different materials, but the same construction. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's kind of your call on that one. I would probably go the Felcors if it were me, though. Ooh, pet the stash. If you run into TC, you just run up and you just go. <laughs> 
just, just pet it. Just pet it gently. Okay. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, now, we'll take this super chat from Joe Gunn. Thanks for the study content. Smash the links, people. Support TC's Taco Bell addiction. <laughs> Gotta keep this kid fed. $250 a week at Taco Bell. It's ridiculous. Oh, and he also got the cuckening. Next person gets entered, which would be Tibby TT. So make sure you give him an entry there, sir. Yep. All right. Uh, Cyborg Santa, what are your thoughts on the Weston Hatchet? I don't have any. My local shop chewed me out for having a hype beast orca that you replaced because I look like a kook. If you like the orca, fucking ride it and fuck your local shop if they're going to try to shame you like that. Like, I don't think the hatchet's anything better. I mean, come on. They're a fucking tiny home company that also makes snowboards. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, all right. Uh, we got Sam Dickerson. I tore my ACL right before the season started. How do I not go insane this winter? Genuine question. I'm suffering. So you are going to get into PT on another level and you are going to rehab your body every chance you get. You are going to learn what supplements you need to take, what you need for nutrition. You're going to follow people like Mobility Duo so you can learn different rehab stuff. You're going to do that. Then you're going to hop on 2BTV.com and watch all the old snowboard movies that are on there for free because there's like 50 of them. Just type snowboarding into 2BTV when you get there. You'll thank me, and it's a free app. You can do that. You're going to watch all the YouTube videos that are dropping out, mainly because I put links down in the description every week for you guys to watch, and I need to know you people are watching them. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, let's see. All right, we got this super chat from Rough. Favorite snowbird movie, and why is it out cold? It is not out cold, but we do have an audio commentary on the Patreon for people that you can listen to. And I've got to edit tomorrow um, the audio commentary for Shred with Dave England and Tom Green. You yeah. see, and I watched that that horrible movie where the resort name literally changed like five times in the movie. Yeah, they just... that was weird. They kept calling the resort a different name, and it was like, what did they just? run out of giving you money <laughs> yeah i, I want to know what happened there with the writers or anything just to be like why do you keep changing the name like it's yeah. the same place you're shooting in the same place we can see the name of the actual resort in the back yeah. are you calling it something else they filmed at silver star in canada well half the time they call it that but then the other half it's like black mountain or something they yeah know. it has some generic name and then they go to another resort that's literally the same resort they were at yeah, you know, it's like that movie is bad, but they made a sequel to it, and that's the next movie we're gonna watch. Yeah, and do an audio commentary. On. Yeah, because it's oh god, those audio commentaries are funny though. Ugh. It's basically TC and I talking for an hour and a half, discussing the movie and why it's, why it's bad and good at the same time. And don't forget to pet the stash. Uh, okay. All right, let's see. So we got this question from Chris Crispio. Looking at a shadow band, six feet, 180 pounds, size 11.5 boots, two left thumbs, mainly do kook heavy, big bear and mammoth. Should I do a 155 wide or 160 wide? If you're trying to go with more freestyle, the 55 wide. If you're trying to do more all mountain, the 60 wide. Mm -hmm. Too bad they need to make a 57 wide for people is really what they need to do. Yeah. Yeah, so uh okay, let's see what else we got here. I feel like we're catching up on stuff. Okay, let's see. Take this super chip from Dino. So ride insane is too stiff for park riding. The ride torrents are so ex expensive but fit me great. I ride park in a set of Thraxuses, <laughs> and I think they're too soft. It's personal preference, man. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the ride torrents, those are, I believe that's Ride's new, like, uh, like backcountry boot, pretty much, for, like, skinning and splitting and stuff like that. Yeah, I uh, think that's what it is. Yeah, 
I wouldn't say they're too stiff. I have plenty of friends that ride the ride in St. Ozen Park, and it's totally fine for them. It's all, yeah, like he said, it's all personal. TC rode these, and look what happened. <laughs> Goddamn TC. This is some dude with clues got in his way, and he kicked him, and then this is what happened. But, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say they're too stiff. TC? They're going to be... They're gonna be great for jumps. I see you. Squish your head. Squish your head. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's personal preference in there. So let's give this man a spin, and then are you ready to pick a new winner? Yeah. All right. Ooh, pet the stash. Pet the stash. All right. So TC, we got to pick a new winner for the wired board giveaway. We gave this guy a week to try to get us. Uh, all right. Well, what do you got? What do you, pick? Got? you say stop when? Now. David Glanders. Fucking throw that shit back in there. We're not giving that to the moderator. Okay. Sorry, David. <laughs> I'm joking. Good. I'm joking. I'll talk to him and see if he actually wants to do it. If not, we'll do it again next week. Yeah, if not, if not, we'll do it again the next week. But Moderator like, David, this is all you moderator. did. <laughs> Believe me, that dude cucked Tommy B a bunch of times, too. <laughs> Tommy B's fault that he actually won. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's, that's how this goes. Uh, all right. Oh, man. All right, we'll take a few more questions while we're here before we wind this down for you guys. You guys have been great today. So um, let's see. Also a lot of entries today. <laughs> yeah. A lot of entries. We're, hey, but a lot of good questions on. and that's what we like. So yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're trying to, questions. we're trying to just make sure the community is taken care of here. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have I no know, problem writing this whole time. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. All right. We'll take this question from rusty trombone. You ever given anyone the rusty trombone? Oh no. May have done it once or twice. Anyways, <laughs> which is more stable, the ride bench warmer or the K2 hypnotist? They're actually pretty equal. The big difference will be in the tips of the ride. I feel like you get just a tiny little bit more flap than you do in the hypnotist. But I mean, you're kind of splitting hairs. And when they're on edge, like the the bench warmer locks in better, in my opinion. If you hit anything hard, it stays just more locked in. The hypnotist just feels a little more smooth. So, yeah. Ooh. This is a good question from our boy, Josiah. Have you all ridden Granby Ranch? No, but I think we're going this year. I want to. Yeah, we're we, that, that is on the short list of resorts that we definitely want to go to that are off the beaten path and go ride. So, yeah. All right. If anybody works there and wants to hook it up, though, well, I'd love to go. Let us know. I'll, I'll pay for lift tickets. It's tax deduction. There you go. <laughs> Work expense. We support our resorts. We don't panhandle and tell resorts. <laughs> give us tickets. We'll give them a better review. Like, I'd rather just go pay. I don't even think tickets are that bad over there either. I thought it was like hundred bucks a day or something. Yeah, that's 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 nothing. It's nothing. So, uh, okay, let's uh, let's take this question from Levi Lieb. Looking for a board for my wife. She really doesn't like how dead her Weston Riva feels. She charges hard, crushes steeps and trees. Prefers a quick edge to edge and no park. Any recommendation? Have you looked at a Karua for her possibly, or an Amplid? You know something a little directional like they do make a smaller pencil and that might be something to go with for her on that and then amplet's got a bunch of boards with different sizes in there too so that might be something to consider or um oh god what is it uh it's the it's the one ride women's board um i can't think of not it. the saturday the uh, magic stick yeah it might be the magic stick if you wanted something a little more lively, otherwise, um, what do you recommend, sir? So I'm thinking a lady Stratos or flagship, uh, or I'm thinking a Belly Bellevue by Solomon, 
Uh, I don't think a rumble fish would be enough for her, honestly. Um, magic stick would have been one equalizer or a cold shoulder as well by K2. Ooh, or a yes, hell yes. Hell yes, for sure. Yeah. Because you can set that stance back when you get to like super pow days, and it does have that setback pow pack or whatever they call it for their tech. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. We'll take this one from Christy and I. Did I miss the Never Summer Clue collab? Oh, I was hoping someone would bring this up. All right. Fucking heaviest goddamn snowboard I ha have right here. It's right there. Test board number eight, first board with the RC Tech from Never Summer. Oh, look, one handed pulled that off. Kevin from Snowboard Pro Camp spent five minutes on a live stream trying to pull it out. Like, what the fuck, dude? So, yesterday, TC and I were at A Basin, and there were definitely some clueless individuals up there. One guy was riding them like regular bindings, and the other guy was, uh, he's like, these are good bindings, but I got to figure them out. And he was like doing a split and shit behind us in the lift line. I don't know. Like, Oh God, they're making weird clicking noises when I pull on them and stuff. <laughs> I don't really trust them. I don't trust them. All right, let's take this one question right here from A. Villar. Just picked up a Ride Cycle Candy as my first brand new board. Thoughts on that for someone who hasn't ridden for a while but got into it last season? I mean, it's, it's a pretty forgiving board. It's not that aggressive. Yeah, I mean it depends on the size for sure. Cause yeah, that too. I think it's once the one. I think it goes one fifty and up gets carbon five in it, and then below that is carbon three. So depending on your size, you'll. I mean, you'll be fine regardless. They just do that because if you're bigger than, like, what is it like six feet for the one fifty or something like that, roughly. Like if we're talking height, like you're definitely yeah. gonna want that more carbon in it. So they just try to do that just because. Bigger dudes that ride it, they're going to need more girth to it. This just feels weird. <laughs> Dude, these things are so fucking janky. You know, I, I love how everyone that... I think my dog's trying to get in here. I think she wants to eat me. Um, but I just love how everyone that is promoting these has been paid to do a review. And then, like, the comments from people are like, it's got German engineering. And I was like... Hey, just because you're German and you went to engineering school doesn't mean it's good German engineering. I mean, what do they call a doctor that graduates bottom of their class? Doctor. What do they call an engineer that graduates bottom of their class? Engineer. So if they're German and they went to a horrible design school and became an engineer with the lowest grades possible, but they passed, they're still an engineer. <laughs> it's like, you know, so anyways. But I think we're going to call it a day today, guys. Uh, we'll be back next week. You know, same same week, same thing. Um, also, next Friday, so a week from tomorrow, Breckenridge, is, Breckenridge opens. But Thursday is the local Appreciation Day sale at Underground in Breck. So if you're coming up early, you should go to that. And you can pick up tickets to the local Appreciation Day party at the Riverwalk. There's going to be movie premieres and prize giveaways and stuff. TC and I will be both be there uh hanging out um so we'd love to see you guys if you're coming up but you got to have your tickets so you got to pick them up you can pick those up uh underground breckenridge or underground snowboards breck or whatever it is dot com you can buy their tickets there but we'd love to see you guys there so also on their instagram that's how i found them yesterday yeah it's it's yeah. super easy if you go on the instagram otherwise on their website they'll tell you everything that they just got in and it's actually set up really well too so yeah so anyways guys um uh, Remember to check out the Cultural Mystery Link of the Week. Check out all those links that we've got there for you guys. And uh, we'll be back next week. But thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah, thanks, guys.